Now, when we think about lavin, we think about HEP 2O. You know, the plastic fittings where you need the special key to demount them. Nobody really thinks about the new keyless one where you've got the same type of fittings but you don't actually need a key to demount them you can just twist pull and they pull off and nobody definitely thinks about the Tigris uh, K5 and M5 where you actually use a press machine so this is actually part two of looking at the Tigris fittings and if you haven't seen part one, I will leave a link in the description below. So let's get on with it and find out a little bit more about these Tigris K5 and M5 fittings. Now, one of the questions I got in part one was, can you bend the actual pipe? Well, if we look at the actual het to all pipe, it's very flexible and very easy to bend. But if we look at the Tigris pipe, so you can see the Tigris pipe or the PECT pipe is not as flexible as the HEP2O pipe. And also, this is 16 millimeters. So that means it won't go on the standard fittings because it's 16 mil. And also that means that the HEP pipe also won't fit in to the Tigris fittings. Don't know why they've done that, but they have. Probably so you don't get the pipes mixed up. Because what's the difference in the pipes? So in the standard HEP pipe, you can see that it actually is multi-layered and it's got three layers in there, but slightly different on this one. This is all plastic inside here, this has aluminium and that's what gives it its rigidity. So when it comes to bending, let's see if we can bend it around my knee. So you can see it does bend around my knee, but it gives quite a big radius bend there. Or is that just because I've got a big knee? With the HEP pipe, once we bend it, it doesn't stay does it? kind of does if you hold it and clip it, but it doesn't on its own. So that's one of the major differences, is once we bend this, because it's got the aluminium in there, it will actually stay in shape for us. What about when it comes to cutting it? Well, when you're cutting this stuff, you can use this type of cutter. It gives us a nice square cut but you can also use the old-fashioned wheel cutters obviously you can't use your pipe slices on it because it's 16 mil not 15 mil and again by the rusty wheel <laughs> you can see that's given us a great cut but can we put these in a pipe bender and See if we can bend it with that. I haven't actually tried it yet. So let's have a look at that. Now obviously this is 16 mil, not 15 mil, but it kind of fits on the guide. See if it goes in the former. It's tight, but it goes in. So it all fits. Let's see if it bends. Look at that. It makes a beautiful bend. Now, I don't know whether the manufacturer allows us to do this. Maybe the manufacturer could comment and tell us whether we can do that or not, whether it affects anything on the inside of the pipe. But it makes a fantastic bend on the 16mm. Shall we try the 20mm in the 22mm bender? So here we have a 20mm and obviously it's going to be a bit slack. But 
we'll see. So it should fit in here easier. Which it does. <laughs> it's a lot easier to bend than copper. And again, it's made a lot better bend than I did with my knee. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So like I say, I can bend it with a bending machine, but I don't know if the manufacturer allows us to. I know the manufacturer says you can buy springs for them, so I'll have to check and make sure you can use a pipe bender because it does slightly distort the pipe. So I don't know whether that would um, void your warranty or not. So uh, I'll get back to you with that. Anyway, let's get on with it now and have a look at how we're going to install this stuff. So as you can see, I've made up this little frame. Now when it comes to the clips, obviously because the 20 mil pipe is slightly smaller than 22, you have no problems clipping the clips in. But because this is 60 mil and not 50 mil, then you wrap over clips they don't clip over. You can just snap that off if you want. Anyway, you can actually buy specialist clips at 16, 20, 25 and 32 millimeters to fit this pipe. These fittings are press fittings, so we're gonna need the press gun to actually make a seal. But first of all, if you want to go to 15mm uh, standard pipe then you're going to need this special 15 by 16 reducer and the good thing about this brass end is if you get the new uh, keyless fitting and you push it straight in and twist it up come off and it's the perfect length to be able to put it on and take it off which you'd expect wouldn't you anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little um, pump to pressure test this and see if we can find any leaks. Now I am not going to press that fitting and then we're going to see if it whistles because this is as an audible alarm if it's got a leak on it. And then I'm going to get my hydraulic pressure tester and then pressurise it and see if we still get a whistle before we get the water coming out. Anyway, when we are putting these together, there's no inserts. So because this has got aluminium and it's a rigid pipe, these are designed that when you push them in, you don't need an insert like you would do with your standard het 2 -O. And also what we've got to do is make sure when we push it in, that we look through the little window at the end where we can see whether it's gone full socket or not. So these fittings really are designed for commercial applications, but you can use them in domestic as well. Now we need to press them. So I need to get my press gun out. So this has been loaned to me by Lavin because you need specialist jaws for it. I've only got jaws with M fittings on, where this is a U fitting. Now, these are called uh, M5 and K5 because you can use five different types of jaws on them. Now, these are the U jaws, which you can also use on the M1 and the K1. So you can use the U, P, H, U, B and TH jaws on this M5 and K5 fittings. So anyway, let's do the 16 milli first. So we have to go right onto the end. So the first telltale sign you've got when you press them is it gives you the ridges depending on which jaw you're using. So that's the first indicator to say whether you've pressed it or not. And again, you can look in the little windows to make sure you've gone full socket before you press them. 
So that's the 16 mil. Let's now do the 20 mil. So I'm not going to press this one because we want to hear this audible alarm and see what it sounds like. I believe it gives it 80 decibels off, so it's going to be loud. So it's going to be 80 decibels. So cover your ears. Are you ready? Let's get my little pressure tester connected. Now we've got the pump connected. Let's see if we can hear it. we could hear that straight away. So let's go and get the hydraulic pressure tester and see what happens there. Now I am assuming that as I'm pumping water into here the air is going to be forced out through here and make the whistling noise. Well that's what I'm expecting anyway. Here goes. Can you hear that? It's not coming from here, it's coming from there. It's sprayed out everywhere. So it did make a whistling noise, but not a very loud one because it was just displacing the air. So I'm guessing the more pipe you've got, then there's more air in the system, and then you will get it making a louder noise for longer. Well, that's what I'm guessing anyway. But obviously, you can see, <laughs> it's not been pressed. But the great thing about pressing fittings is, we can just press over this now and it should seal. So I just need to make sure it's still full socket, which it is. Now pressed it, so we can now see if we can pressure test it. And you can see, <laughs> that is definitely holding pressure. So you can see I have taken the pressure of this little frame up to 4 bar. Now according to Wavin, the water regulations and BS6700, you should pump it to one and a half times the maximum operating pressure for one hour with no drop. So hopefully you've liked this video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.